Hi, my name is Zeke, and my call sign is KJ7NLL. Today I'm going to show you how to launch the space shuttle. This is a new playlist that I'm making, um, and at the end of it we are going to eventually dock to the International Space Station in a program called Flight Gear. It's a flight simulator with a lot of airplanes on it. So, Sharing on screen. And all right, here we go. So first step is if we have the dev version of the space shuttle, you'll, you might want to engage this. It will allow us to have a backup computer in case of severe malfunctions. So now we're going to go to the pilot field. We start the countdown timer right here for our final nine minutes before liftoff. We set this one to make nine minutes up to nine. Then Timer set and start. Now, as we can see, see, the timer is now counting down. Our next step is to make sure that the FCIs are at to on. These can uh, allow us to have vital information, and it's a triple redundancy bus, which means it will allow us to make sure everything looks good and is fine, working fine. So we will set the boiler and two supplies to on. The boiler and two supplies were used to cool the most of the orbiter. Um, with uh, nitrogen when it, it, it boils at 100,000 feet. The, we turn on the boiler heaters to A and auto suck downs, we cannot change those. Then we will change the APU fuel valves to open. The hydraulic cert pump to GPC. The powers to on. And for some reason that will also turn these to off GPC. Now, if you speed select norm on all of these, and that will be it here. All right, these are gray. Now we wait for these to pressurize up to nominal 3,000 PSI. I'm going to pause the video, uh, the recording here so that I can unpause when it gets up to that speed. Now that our pressures are at 3,000 PSI, all here, green, we can now set the APU operate switches. APU is our auxiliary power unit, and we set them to start run, which means starting them and then running them as soon as they start. So, now we have that. We now will turn the hydraulic main pump press to high. The hydraulics are for the main engine gimbals. They gimbal it to point where we need to go. Now, at T minus 707 seconds, we will have liftoff. But there's one more thing we need to do. In cockpit view. We now need to go to the FES. 
the flash evaporator FES are turned off. They provide cooling for the orbiter, most of the water FES boils in contact of hot Freon and will be ejected at 100,000 feet because that is when the pressure gets so thin that we cannot, that water boils it at that. So now, T minus zero seven seconds, we will press shift I and lift off, round into space. Now, help, aircraft checklists, cross check with in-game checklist, everything looks good. Now, we're just gonna wait till T minus zero seven seconds, so I'm going to pause the video here and then play at T minus 10 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, ignition, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Now we're going to look outside. Beautiful view of the shuttle taking off. Space shuttle, simulation options. Now I want to show you some things. Well, this is lifting off. When you load the shuttle, the cockpit detail will be default. You will want this at high if you are going to see everything on the ceiling and all this stuff. We want this above 70, I mean, around 70, below 60 is ideal. And um, so SRB shake view. Anyway, you want to keep these default because there might be some bugs. The first time I tried to launch this, it didn't work. So we just left these normal, super lightweight. Lausto loose items will allow us to see uh, things floating when we are in space. Things are going up. We are launching into space and we will be there soon. Now, you do want to automatically use Earth Orbital View Rendering because that will allow you to see the Earth Orbital View Rendering as you can see right now. To change these settings for the Earth Orbital View Rendering, you can go to View, Earth Orbital View Rendering, and set whatever you want. Automatic Light Scattering sets this and it just said that we're going to separate these in just a second, so be watching. Um, this is how you can set your payload in the operations. Oh, and there it goes. In the, these are all the views, but in the EVA, Mission Specialist, we can see here Hubble Space Telescope. And if you're going to put this, you want standard light. So we're going to do that. And this is the view of the shuttle. It's very nice. I like to look outside here, but that's just me. And now we will close this. It's also time to allow still loose items. And equipment, fuel and payload. This is 65%. So I'm going to pause the video here and play when it's at like one or 2% so you can see the ET separation. All right, we are at 2%. So these engines will go out very shortly here. Reduce throttle and prepare for orbital insertion. Miko, main engine cutoff. As you can see, our thrusters right there. And ET separation is going to happen 
just a second. And there it goes. ET separation. Control switch to RCS. This is a really nice view. And you can actually see this external tank for a really long time. And now if we do close that and do it again, it's just the shuttle this time. Thank you for watching everyone. Next video is going to be about the post Miko and getting ready to do a little bit more. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.